Shalom everyone, you're here for Hebrew and Israel. This is the first section of video for the Aviv Search 2023. Uh, today is the 21st of March. It's a, it's a Tuesday, 21st of March. So we are also after the, uh, the equinox, which is, or well, we're in the equinox, which is an interesting thing to discuss. Um, when it comes to calendars, um, previously I was at uh, near Yad Moldechai, which is a location we sometimes look at, um, and uh, we found some few here and there uh, Aviv, but mostly pre-Aviv stage. The more south we go, which was where we are, we're in Yar Be'eri. Uh, I've been here years before, and uh, we have some barley here as well. We noticed that uh, some of the barley has been trodden on, I don't know by whom, uh, but there are also areas more over there, or south, where we can see that um, um, animals have eaten the barley. Now, I don't want to take anything near the, po the pathway because uh, usually there's too much heat there. There is a little bit of barley. Again, this doesn't really qualify as a field. This has always been part of the problem that there are areas where you know you have barley, but it's not really a proper field. And also not all of this is barley. Some of this is sometimes something else. And um, as you can see, I have some barley here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this barley and see what's going on inside. Obviously, we're talking about the need to be able to harvest, not just pick a few, um, squeezing it, something just came out. So this is getting close to the state of Aviv. Okay, this is, this is much more advanced than flowering and so on. But as you can see, some of these still have a little bit, there's a little bit of a flower on top, but it's very, very, very close. Uh, you can see the squeeze and now the squeeze test with me is a bit of a problem because I got very strong fingers because of my training. But these are getting very, very, very close. Uh, but I, I would argue this is not really a field. Um, and uh, even though it, it, it can work as a field, parameters when it comes to how you define a field, let's say. Um, people in antiquity would have brought their barley from a cultivated field, not a wild field, because wild barley tends to shatter very easily. And this has always been part of the problem with years where, um, you know, we went out and we're checking wild barley. And then when you check wild barley, you discover it shatters too easily. And uh, then you say, oh, we made a mistake or something like that. Now, this barley here is, I think, a little bit dry. No, same, same situation. So it's, it's what you can call soft dough, um, which, is, which is really just before Aviv. And because we're having wintry weather again, it does affect the, uh, the, the situation the barley's in. Um, another interesting thing that can happen is when you, when you kind of see the barley from a distance, you say, oh, look, it's yellow. Like, the term Aviv, as I've explained in the past, is a bit of a tricky term. But um, you can sometimes reach situations where um, you find, um, you can see, for example, this. This is, this is barley really in, one would argue, really in Aviv stage. This is a full formed, pretty dry, like 80% 80, 80 dry. And, but there's a few, only a few of them. You know, this is what it would look like, not a green shoot. Uh, even though we've had years where you will find green shoots, but they're really full because winter was really good and they grew really high. I mean, there was one year we went out in this area and it was so tall. I mean, we lost people within the tall field. And um, what you end up with is uh, barley that's uh, very, uh, well, it could be either green with amazing, uh, with amazing uh, um, uh, heads on them, and sometimes it'll be just really small but yellow. 
And that's part of the problem that, you know, you can see this from a distance, you say, oh, look, it's Aviv. Like, there have been cases where people declared Aviv when they just, you know, saw some barley with hay and say, oh, it must have something inside it. But again, it's a question, how do you exactly define the term Aviv? Uh, but because it does relate to the concept, it, it does eventually relate to the concept of harvesting barley, I would argue it has to be a stage where you have um, at least somewhat a solid, um, a solid, uh, um, grain. So I would argue this year, for example, it seems to be, you know, I have to make sure I get the things in the camera. This, I would argue, is um, is Aviv, but there's very little of it here. Uh, give it a couple of days, this will probably all turn into Aviv, but this is, as I said, not a proper field. Again, there's some over here. You can see some over here as well. You know, that's Aviv. Um, yeah, so I would argue Aviv is, first, of all, first, first and foremost, when you actually already have a grain, not just a head. If the head's empty, then there's nothing there, because it all has to do with harvest. Um, and it also has to be a, a field that you harvest. You can't just say, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to declare Aviv on like a small patch somewhere. I've been talking against this for years now. Thank God people have actually started picking up on this, and I'm seeing more and more people who report or talk about this, about this subject say the same thing. But we also have to be careful with the type of place we check, because, for example, having a tree near a field, um, it changes the way the plants get water, it changes the, the, the not only underground water, but above water, above you know, rainfall, things like that. So you have to be kind of careful when you check these types of fields. So there's a little bit of a, of a viv here. Uh, give this a week of, uh, less than a week of sunshine, all of this will probably turn into a viv. So again, we're still a few days out from signing the new moon. So you know, for now, I can't say there's real Aviv here, but it's, it's very, very close. Okay, this is a third field I'm looking at. This is uh, Tzomet Re'im. Uh, Tzomet Re'im, sorry. And usually there's a field that way, but it seems to be the animals got to it. This is an area they haven't got to yet. Uh, we have a very, I wouldn't say field, but a, a nice patch of uh, wild barley uh, that's most definitely in the state of Aviv. Um, I wouldn't say this qualifies as a field. There are particulars of what they used to call fields back in the day, but I checked some of these and they are, first of all, you can see someone's been here. You know, someone, someone's kind of broken off the... Um, ends and so on, which is kind of shows someone's been looking as well, which is really uh, important to also see. And, um, but you can, you can clearly see these are not squeezable. Um, you know, the inside there's a, there's a full form seed there. I, I took stills of this as well. Um, but um, there's a full form seed inside. It's 80, even 90%. This, I would say this is more 80. Okay, um, and it's, it's very important to understand that this is what we're looking for. Heads with grain inside, grain that's not completely squeezable, it doesn't pop out, because um, this is the closest definition we can have for Aviv as far as I'm concerned. And the only thing is that this barley here is, you know, not in massive quantities. Okay, this is a, a very small section. We've got other plants growing here, other wild uh, plants growing in this area. And over there we have a, a wheat field. So uh, the, there's no cultivated barley so far. And, but if, if this was much more full with barley, we could have said, oh, there's a field of barley here. But we're not done yet. But uh, as you can see, there's barley. It's not very high this year. Again, um, my suspicion is because of the rain. There was less rain um, in Israel this year, which affects the barley. This is what I personally predicted. I didn't talk about it public, but publicly because I, I don't like do, doing predictions. But for example, there is a um, there is a there is a, a kind of like a, a, a stream down here that should have been full. Like we, we were supposed to drive through water and uh, the stream is empty. Well, not empty. The, the area we drive through is empty. 
Um, this area is just, it's supposed to be a lot of water down here, and there is, and you'll see in a moment. Okay, so there's water down there, and we're supposed to, you know, there's a car down there, and you can see that area is supposed to, was supposed to be full with water. So my suspicion is that um, it didn't rain as much, and therefore it's affected not only the growth of barley, but the growth of everything, because you can see here the terrace, for example, are really, really low. You know, they're, they're, the plants are very, very low which is the effect of having less rain. But this does not mean that, uh, this does not mean that we won't find you know, enough Aviv to say, look, even if we don't find a field, there'll still be Aviv. We'll still say that there's Aviv, but we'd rather see all the details and so on. Now, I mentioned something about trees earlier, and this is a very good example of this. So we're in the same terrain, same area, same altitude, same humidity and everything. This area, for some reason, has grown much more substantially. Like the, the wild, we used to call it wild lettuce. I don't, know, I don't remember the exact term for it, but this area, it's much higher, which means there's probably more water underground here. And this is why, you know, probably the trees are, that's why the trees are also here, because there's more water in this specific section, and therefore you will find barley maybe, actually barley here is also in, in an earlier stage. So there's more water in this section, but again, give it a couple of days. This all the barley in this area would also turn into uh, uh, will turn into Aviv. Again, but again, this is not a proper field. This is not something you would harvest. This is wild barley. You have to you have to really cherry pick when you go through a place like this. So if anyone declares, for example, Aviv based on on this type of location, they're putting themselves in a little bit of a corner here uh, by making that proclamation. But there is some aviv here, there is some barley here, but we have not come across like a proper field like we've seen in previous years. Okay, part three. We finally found a proper field. This is, uh, I would call this a proper field, clearly. Uh, it's off of the whole area here with farmland this fenced off area that surprisingly we've never really paid attention to and this may have been some kind of um, scientific experiment something that they were looking through uh, testing the barley here has uh, clearly shown us that um, there is a relatively high percentage of aviv here There are areas we can clearly see, like these yellow patches where we found Aviv. Uh, areas which are not clearly at Aviv yet are extremely close. Hence, um, from my parameters at least, I would say uh, this field in the next couple days This patch, I wouldn't say this, this little field here is, is enough to say that there is a beef. Uh, obviously, I want to check other areas because this is also, we try to keep some kind of a scientific method here of trying to understand what's in front of us and so on. But I would say that this area is most definitely uh, enough to say that we are entering the period of growth. And, uh, this is, this is a great find because so far we've only seen patches. So I think it's, it's, it's very, very important to, uh, to demonstrate this location as well. Yeah, we're still in the area of Tel Gama. smaller people and they they checked and they said look it's it's clearly either at the stage of Aviv or um, or very close to it so this this is very satisfying to find this okay so we're at Tel Gama and uh, don't let the color confuse you this looks very yellow in the video but this is still quite green uh, there's an interesting mixture here um, there's definitely Aviv in this area, and 
it is uh, even in some areas shattered specifically what's near my feet here um, is most definitely shattered uh, because this area gets a lot of sunlight and a lot of wind so it's not a surprise that wind would swoop through here and kind of destroy everything tail gamma a bit of a controversy these days we used to come here and this was like for us this was the the big thing but throughout the years we started realizing this is not really a proper field and you know the the water drainage here is kind of problematic so it creates like these weird patches and so on it, but it's still indicative of what's going on in the area so i would say that in tail gamma we can say that there is Aviv, but I would not use Tel Gamma as a field, even though in the past, for example, I pointed to that area over there. Um, that can function as a field. I can't remember what year it was, but I kind of suggested that. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's plenty of Aviv here and even things slightly after Aviv uh, starting to shatter. Um, but this is, this is expe expected in this area. So yeah, I would say Tel Gamma... If this was a proper field, I would say there's plenty of Aviv here, and we're even very close to harvest, and as I've said before quite a few times, there's no issue in harvesting before Passover. There's an issue of eating before, before you do the, the wave. So Tel Gamma, like many years before, has uh, given us a lot of information, and I would argue that Tel Gamma is uh, good enough to indicate that there's that we are most definitely in the period of Aviv. So this is the first video from the Jordan Valley and this is kind of disappointing because we went, we've driven through several fields and either things have been destroyed or um, have been uh, grazed by the uh, the cattle, you can see the cattle dung over here. We saw the animals grazing and so on. I'm right now facing east. So I, this is Jordan, obviously. That's the, the fence. And uh, it's very green, very beautiful. Um, almost once you, when you want to sing something with the sound of music. But the point is that in the areas where we can see barley, uh, it's still very young. Like when we were traveling through, through Samaria into the east, uh, last year I filmed at uh, Mechorah. We saw barley there, and it was a kind of quite interesting mix of things. But I'm here near Vadi Faran, and very very young barley now my assumption is that this has happened because of uh, different rainfall from the north and the south and uh, but so far in the jordan valley and this is not the first field we check but so far in jordan valley um, we're either seeing fields on the western side of the road so this is route 90 on the western side of the road, everything's been grazed. On the eastern side of the road, where they haven't reached anything yet, uh, we're finding an interesting reality where either there's no barley or the barley is still in grass stage or in the boot. Um, and there can be different factors that affect this. And this is why it's important to check every year because uh, we learn a lot from just going through the fields, seeing what things are doing, seeing how the soil affects things, seeing how weather affects things, how much rain, how much sun, and so on. Uh, because in the ancient world, when you were a farmer, these, all these things were factors in your decision-making, and when to harvest, and so on. So this is a uh, very, very uh, interesting and teachable uh, moment for us when it comes to the Aviv. So continuing in the Jordan Valley, just down the road from the previous location, same situation. We have uh, barley either in the grass or in the boot. Um, and to tell the truth, we were discussing this in the car. If it's possible that what we're actually seeing here is uh, what we think is young barley is actually barley that's been eaten. And now it's just regrowing because it's a grass, so they regrow. So you can see uh, some very young barley 
but this could have been even I can see cow dung here um, just to reference this is uh, Wadi Talkid has an Arabic name which I can never get pronounced correctly Kaulid something like that um, it's a very beautiful place I mean last year I decided to film here at the end just to get the atmosphere of what it would have been like to be a farmer in ancient biblical lands. Uh, this unfortunately turns yellow in about two months, um, but uh, it's still very beautiful to walk around in. So again, same situation, not a lot of barley, a lot of flowers, a lot of mustard everywhere, and uh, birds. Caves, a little few caves here and there. Actually, Bedouins recently, I started noticing that they've, some of the Bedouins in this area have moved into some of the caves. Um, on the road, we saw them creating some kind of a new uh, settlement area in the caves down the road. So it's an interesting thing to see. Not, comp not particularly legal. They probably will be removed eventually, but um, still kind of interesting to see how people in a much more pastoral environment, how they how they choose to live. Um, 1900s, sorry, 20th century, 1800s, 19th century, uh, a lot of uh, European scholars came to see the Bedouin way of life because they went to see, is this something that we can learn from it for uh, understanding the Bible? And it's true. Um, there are some things, not everything. We have to say it's not completely the Israelite culture. It's, completely, it's slightly different, but still very interesting does give us a lot of information. As you can see, see some caves over there. Again, Jordan. And just hillsides, these haven't changed in a millennia. The size of the cars, this will be the noises an Israelite would hear it here. Cattle, sheep, goats, people calling to one another, and birds. Birds flying in the air, butterflies. It's always beautiful to come back here. Okay, so this is our last field. This is in the top of the Jordan Valley. We're only a few, uh, about a mile away. It's about a kilometer and a half away from the checkpoint in northern, the northern Jordan Valley. Uh, after here, I go to Beit Shan, which is how I get home. But um, this is a field that's been very important for, for us throughout the years. I mean, uh, this is an interesting mixed field because there are sections which are uh, agriculturally, um, this is a, a plowed, a plowed field, uh, the farmer plants mostly wheat here, but there's sections where you usually have barley. There was even years where this was the decisive field where we couldn't find Aviv anywhere and there was plenty of Aviv here. There's a lot of small, a lot of sections which are big enough to be a field, but again, um, like other parts that we saw in the Jordan Valley, it's still very early. So this year we can say the Negev is king when it comes to the Aviv. And you can see here, barley in relatively early stage these are completely empty and you can even have situations where you have yellow and this thing even shattered a little bit and in our specific case here this is completely empty hopefully you can see it empty or a very very small seed so this actually has Ah, that's fun. This is actually barley in Aviv stage, but this is a rarity. Um, most of the most of what you see here, like 90% of what you see here, is uh, um, is not even close. But this is fun because you know you can have abnormalities. Like this is what happens with uh, fields which which are not cultivated. And we even had sections here where we saw yellow and it was empty. Like for example, there's a section here. It's kind of yellow. Um, let's see if there's anything inside it. Yeah, this one having it as well. Cool. Okay. So there's there's very small there's a very small seed inside. And you can see 
some, there's a few here and there with Aviv inside them, and then others, most of them, most of them are not. So this can be, this is Aviv, it's a hard dough. It's not harvest yet, not harvestable yet, but um, very, very close. So what we learned this year is that it's important to check different areas. It's important to always see what's going on. Um, we, in our method, prefer to see both um, cultivated fields and non-cultivated fields, focusing mostly on non-cultivated fields. But I would openly say in, in ancient Israel, they would uh, go according to, uh, they would go according to uh, a cultivated field because it actually comes from your harvest and not something you look wild. But wild barley gives us a much better indicator sometimes. There's a whole methodology here. We explain it in our report that we publish every year. Uh, but it's very clear. Uh, Jordan Valley, not yet Aviv. Negev has Aviv, and uh, Aviv is not just seeing a head of grain. Um, it's, it's very important to point that out. Uh, you have to examine the grain, you have to open, up, open it up, see if there's anything inside, see what stage it's in, and so on. Because it all has to do with your harvest, not with just arbitrarily saying, look, uh, I have a uh, standing grain. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. I know um, th these discussions always bring out controversy, controversy, but also questions. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this. So uh, for the next, hopefully, God willing, next year, uh, we'll be able to uh, do this again.